You know what I really wish I could do is just take a lemon squeezer and squeeze a little bit more time out of my day. If you plan accordingly at night, you're going to be able to squeeze a little bit of extra juice out of the next day. There's a couple of things that I do in my personal life to try to set myself up for the best next day possible. To summarize it, the first thing that I do is I try to make sure I get enough sleep and I try to make sure that the sleep that I do get is good high quality sleep. And the next thing I do is I try to make sure that I have systems and routines in place to try to make my life as productive as possible and make my morning as easy as possible. Mornings can be stressful and hectic even if you're a morning person. If I want to have a productive morning, the groundwork for that has to start the night before. A huge component of feeling rested is making sure that you got enough sleep. The first way in which I try to make sure that I sleep long enough is by being realistic in how long it takes me to get ready for bed. Regardless of if you realize it or not, you've probably established some kind of nighttime routine or nighttime habits. And hopefully these habits involve brushing your teeth and washing your face and flossing. Flossing is so important and it's not just to keep your dentist happy, but actually if you're not flossing, you can even cause yourself complications such as heart disease. So please do yourself a favor and take care of your body now so that you have less complications and less troubles later. Once you identify what your nighttime routine is, my recommendation is time yourself, time how long it takes you to get ready for bed. And the reason for this isn't just so that you know and try to make it more productive. I'm a huge advocate for increasing efficiency and trying to streamline processes, but not here. The reason I want you to time yourself is because I want you to be realistic in your expectations of how long it takes you to get ready for bed. You might realize that it takes you longer than you thought to get ready for bed, and that way you have a good idea of what time you need to start getting ready for bed in order to try to set yourself up on a consistent schedule. I've learned that on the days when I don't wear makeup, it takes me 11 minutes and 35 seconds on average to get ready for bed. And on the days when I do wear makeup, I actually have to add 8 minutes and 12 seconds to that. So this helps me plan accordingly. I'm one of those people who doesn't like to feel rushed, so if I wait to start getting ready for bed until I am 100% tired, until I have no energy, then I am going to be miserable getting ready for bed and I'm going to cut corners. The next recommendation that I have for you is to set up a specific time when you want to completely cut yourself off from screens for the rest of the evening. I recommend doing this about 2 hours before you physically want yourself to be asleep in bed. The blue light that's emitted from those screens interferes with the production of a hormone, the sleep hormone, called melatonin. And when your body is not producing the right amount of melatonin, then regardless of how tired you are, you might have a hard time falling asleep or staying asleep. So it's better to just limit your screen time two hours before you want to be asleep. And now here you might be thinking, oh, but I can switch my phone to nighttime mode. I can switch my computer to nighttime mode. Maybe your computer or your phone already does it automatically. And yes, that part's true, but recent studies have also shown that your body reacts to yellow light in similar ways as it does to blue light. So until research is more conclusive, maybe it's just safer if you plan accordingly and just not stare at a screen for two hours before going to bed. The next tip I have for you might be a little bit controversial, but I recommend not physically getting into bed until you feel tired, until you are confident that once your face hits the pillow, you will actually be able to sleep. If you're not feeling that, or if you're feeling unusually inspired, don't get into bed. And my reason for that is because your bed should not be a place for multitasking. It should be a sacred designated place where you go to get refreshed, to get rejuvenated. It should be the place where you go to refill your energy supply. I know that this one will be controversial to people who like to read before bedtime, people who like to get into bed with a good book, but I'm not going to advise you to do something that I don't do or advise you to do something that doesn't work for me. And the reason I don't do this is because if I pick up a book from my nightstand to read while I am in bed waiting to fall asleep, I start reading and I keep reading and then suddenly it's 3 in the morning, suddenly it's 5 in the morning, and then surprise, I've read the whole Harry Potter book in one night. So that's not a good way to set myself up for sleep, but if it works for you, then I'm so happy for you. But it doesn't work for me, so that is why I'm recommending that you don't go to bed until you feel ready to fall asleep. Also, I'm not hating on book readers. I think it's great to read a book before bedtime, but it's also helpful to find a place outside of your bed to do it. Maybe find a couch or your favorite corner in your home, and you will have such an easier time falling asleep. 
and over time you will train your brain that your bed is your sleeping place and you will have such an easier time falling asleep if you treat your bed like a special place where you go to get re-energized. So now let's assume you're ready for bed, you're ready to go, you're feeling tired. At this point, I have a confession to make. I don't make my bed every morning. Part of my routine for getting ready for bed is making my bed before I go to bed. The reason I don't make my bed in the morning is because when I wake up in the morning, usually my husband's still asleep and I'm not going to kick him out of bed. So instead what I do is I make my bed at night. This helps me to have a better quality of sleep because it puts me in the right mindset of thinking I am going to a comfy place. The next tip that I have for a good quality of sleep is avoid alcohol right before bedtime. There's nothing wrong with an occasional beer or an occasional glass of wine with your dinner, but having alcohol too close to your bedtime can disrupt your quality of sleep. Although you might be thinking that alcohol is going to help you sleep better because it makes you feel tired, maybe it puts your mind at ease. The way alcohol works is it affects your nervous system and when you're sleeping, your nervous system is actually pretty busy. By consuming alcohol before bedtime, you're actually preventing yourself from having a good quality restful sleep time. Also, a similar concept applies for caffeine. Caffeine helps you to feel awake, so maybe at night or after work you felt a little bit tired but you needed to do more work, so maybe you had an extra cup or an extra 5 cups of coffee. And unfortunately, caffeine has a pretty long half-life and that means that caffeine stays in your body and is still doing things to you even when you're not feeling energized anymore. And caffeine also interferes with your melatonin production. So by having caffeine, just because you wanted to get a little bit of more work done, you might actually be causing yourself to be more tired the next day because you didn't get as good of quality of sleep as you could have otherwise. Another tip I have to try to help you have the best quality of sleep possible Hydrate yourself less aggressively in the nighttime than you do in the daytime. And especially if you're drinking coffee or if you consume alcohol or if you're eating a lot of protein, it's so important that you take care of hydrating yourself all throughout the day and not just leave it for nighttime so that you won't have to wake up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Something else that you should avoid doing right before bedtime is eating a big heavy meal. Although it might be tempting to put yourself into a food coma, because you think it might help you to sleep better. This is actually not true. It won't help you to sleep better because then your body will be hard at work actually digesting and breaking down foods. So try not to stress your body out by having too big of a meal right before bedtime. Also, if you are going to bed right after eating, you might be putting your body at risk of over time developing something called acid reflux. So please try to give yourself a little bit of cushion time between the time that you eat your last meal and the time that you go to bed. And on the subject of food, if you are trying to lose weight, then it's so important to get enough sleep because when you don't get enough sleep, your body produces a stress hormone called ghrelin and ghrelin actually causes you to eat more and in some cases overeat. So if you're trying to lose weight, it's so important to get a good night of sleep. Now let's move on to what I do the night before to try to set myself up for a productive next day. Setting aside your clothes the night before when you're not tired and when you're not feeling rushed is such a game changer and it sets you up for having the best day possible because you will end up wearing clothes that make you feel both comfortable and confident. And by doing this, you're going to be preventing what could have been an extra source of stress in the morning. So do yourself a favor and pick out your clothes the night before. The second tip I have for ensuring that your next day is a productive day may also help you have better quality sleep and that is doing what's called a brain dump. A brain dump is basically you write down everything that's on your mind, anything that's bothering you, anything you have to do, anything that you think you might have to do. Basically, you're dumping out anything that's taking up space in your mind and putting it on paper or on your note-taking app. Personally, I like to do this in a journal or in a notebook. I don't like to use apps for this, so I do this during my no screen time because if I pick up my phone to try to do this, then I might get distracted with other apps, other notifications, and same goes with the computer. Doing a nightly brain dump in a notebook during my no screen time has helped me out so much because then it helps me to actually visualize everything that I have to do. And then I can take all that information and update my planner for the next day and the remainder of the week or any future days accordingly. And this is such a good habit to develop because it helps to make sure that you're not forgetting things. And if you do forget something, it will probably show up the next day in your next brain dump. I used to fool myself into thinking that I thrived on spontaneity, that I didn't need a planner, I didn't need a calendar, and I never realized how much easier my life would be once I started using a planner. 
I don't use my planner like a regular planner. I don't have a million different highlighters that I use. I don't have a million different color coded pens, but I do use it to keep track of important dates. And I do use it sort of as a to-do list so I can mark things off that I have to do. And I update it every night accordingly. And this also helps me to keep track of how I'm using my time. And at the end of the day, it helps me to visualize what still needs to be done, what I maybe didn't get done, or what I maybe should have focused more time on. Basically, you're combining everything that you have to do and everything that's in your mind into one place so that you can visualize it, you can organize it, and you can plan accordingly for it. The human brain and memory is not like a computer. We can't just try to keep everything internally in our heads and assume that it's all gonna work out, it's all gonna make sense, we're gonna show up for the right appointment on the right time and finish all our work by the correct date. Or maybe you can, I don't know. But I've learned that I definitely can't, so by doing a brain dump, I'm able to conceptualize everything and see everything I have to do, and then I'm able to distribute it into my planner so that I can make it happen. Another tip I have to make your life easier for the next day is if you have chip nail polish and this bothers you, then take off your chip nail polish the night before. Don't wait until the next day because your nail polish is not going to be any less chipped than when you went to bed. Personally, this bothers me. I hate looking down at my nails and seeing that my nail polish is chipped. I'd rather be wearing no nail polish than have chipped nail polish. So it's been really helpful for me to get into the habit of taking off my nail polish the night before instead of scrambling to do it in the morning when I'm tired and I have a hundred things to do. If you have a dishwasher in your home, you know that having a dishwasher can make your life a lot easier, but it can also help you build up some really bad habits. And one of those bad habits that I've seen other people do and that I've also been guilty of because I'm not perfect is leaving things in your sink and then loading the dishwasher all at once. So here's my advice when it comes to dishwashers. Never ever go to bed with a full clean dishwasher. And the reason for that is because then in the morning you'll end up just putting dishes in the sink and then throughout the day you'll have to actually take the time to put multiple things into the dishwasher and this adds into your time. So make your life easier and put things in the dishwasher as you use them. If you want to set yourself up for a productive morning, another thing that you need to do is be aware of your coffee situation or your caffeine situation, whatever that might be. If you are a coffee person, it is so helpful to invest in a coffee maker with a timer so that you can wake up to the smell of freshly brewed coffee. And if you found that having a pot of coffee just doesn't appeal to you, then what you can do is invest in a single serving coffee maker like a Keurig or an espresso and I have personally found an espresso to be a total game changer in my life. So in my personal coffee situation, I will not go to bed without refilling my Nespresso water tank and also without emptying the container that holds the used pods. And the reason for that is because I don't want to struggle in the morning when I'm tired with having to refill the Nespresso machine or not being able to close the machine because the pods container is full. So by getting into the habit of doing these things the night before, I've had such an easier time getting ready in the morning and getting myself ready and caffeinated for the day. I hope all these tips have been super helpful to you and if you want to know more about how I make my morning more efficient, head on over to my other video where I talk about what I eat every day to set myself up for a productive day.